Lasers ripped through Nathan King's spacecraft, forcing the grizzled human explorer into a crash landing on an unknown alien world, smoke billowing from the wreckage. Nathan had stumbled into the middle of a civil war, laser blasts and explosions shaking the dense jungle around him. Hunkering down behind the twisted hull of his ship, he peered out to see a group of alien rebels ambushing an ornate royal hovercraft, their sleek black combat armor and advanced plasma rifles in stark contrast to the gilded transport. An elegant female in resplendent white robes stumbled out of the wrecked craft, clutching a bleeding wound as the merciless rebels took aim to execute her. Nathan swore under his breath. The glimpse he'd caught of the priceless jewels on her forehead marked her as Queen Wren, matriarch of the technologically superior Iridian Imperium. The same arrogant galactic power that derided humanity as violent primitives, little more than monosyllabic ape-men armed with combustion-based weapons. Those soft, prissy Iridian pansies had never seen how a human fought. Snatching his trusty kinetic pistol from its holster, Nathan charged into the fray with a fierce battle cry. These alien dirtbags were about to get a crash course in good old-fashioned human ass-kicking 101. Sprinting into their midst, he shoulder-checked the first rebel, flipping him neatly onto his back. Before the stunned Iridian could react, Nathan triggered a point-blank headshot that splattered neon green blood and brain matter across the loamy soil. Two more attackers spun toward him, energy weapons humming menacingly as they took aim. Nathan dove to the side, their plasma beams sizzling the air where he'd been a split second before. Rolling smoothly to his feet, he snapped off two more shots from the hip. The hypervelocity slugs punched through the first alien shields in a crackle of overloaded circuitry, blowing grapefruit-sized holes in the bastard's chest before he'd even hit the ground. Nathan closed on the remaining rebel in three long strides, knocking his rifle aside with a brutal chop to the wrist. A vicious elbow smash caved in the Iridian's faceplate, shards of translucent material embedding in ruptured eyeballs. The alien crumpled, gurgling pathetically. Nathan put a final round through his skull to shut him up. Stowing his pistol, Nathan wiped spattered blood off his face, turning to face the wide-eyed Iridian queen. She cowered back, trembling hands raised in supplication. Please, you hulking brute, don't hurt me! I am Queen Wren of the Iridian Imperium. Those rebel filth meant to assassinate me and seize my throne for their vile insurrection. I will begrudgingly ally with you, primitive, if you can get me to my loyal forces. Nathan ignored the primitive jab. He was used to Iridian snobbery by now. There was no time to waste bickering. The jungle teemed with hostile rebels, ferocious fauna, and treacherous terrain. They needed each other to survive the perilous gauntlet ahead. More importantly, his soldiers' instincts warned this was bigger than one spoiled alien monarch's life. If these rebels succeeded in their coup, the brutally militaristic replacement they planned to crown could plunge the whole damned galaxy into a bloody total war. Like it or not, the fate of Iridian civilization, and maybe interstellar peace itself, rested on keeping her royal pain in the ass alive until they reached reinforcements. It was going to be a hell of a long, dangerous slog. Nathan unslung his pulse rifle, charging the power cell with an ominous hum. Time to show these puffed-up ETs what a primitive human was really capable of. They were about to get one hell of an education. After a grueling trek through the hostile jungle, Nathan and Wren finally reached the hidden encampment of her loyal forces. Ragged and battle-weary, the Iridian soldiers eyed the human stranger with wary suspicion. Nathan wasted no time. He dove right into assessing their dire situation, his keen military mind already formulating strategies. The Iridian troops were well-equipped but badly outnumbered. They fought with rigid predictability, their formations and tactics woefully ill-suited for the rebels' guerrilla strikes. Your Majesty, with all due respect, your forces need to adapt. Nathan said bluntly. The rebels are running circles around them. We need to even the odds. Wren bristled at the criticism, but couldn't deny the truth of his words. She watched as Nathan gathered her officers, laying out plans for ambushes, lightning raids, and misdirection. His expertise was undeniable, 
honed by years of fighting humanity's own rebellions and insurrections. In the days that followed, Nathan ran the Iridian soldiers through grueling drills, reshaping them into a leaner, more flexible fighting force. He taught them to use the terrain, to strike hard and fade away, leaving the rebels grasping at shadows. Slowly but surely, the tide began to turn. Impressed by the human's fierce dedication, Ren pulled Nathan aside. I must admit, I underestimated you, she said, humility warring with royal pride. Your species' prowess in warfare is formidable. A wry smile tugged at Nathan's lips. We've had a lot of practice, your highness. War is pretty much humanity's national pastime. Ren hesitated, then reached into her robes, producing a sleek silver device. This is a quantum phase shifter, the pinnacle of Iridian weapons technology. I want you to have it. Nathan took the weapon reverently, marveling at its perfect balance and thrumming power. Under Ren's guidance, he quickly mastered its use, the phase shifter becoming an extension of his lethal skills. Armed and armored with Iridian tech, Nathan was a force to be reckoned with. Their newfound partnership was put to the test when General Zekron's rebel forces launched a surprise assault on the royal compound. Plasma bombs rained from the sky as the rebel troops, clad in stolen power armor, smashed through the outer defenses. Nathan and Wren rallied the defenders, leading a fierce counterattack. Nathan's guerrilla tactics sowed chaos among the rebel ranks, while Wren's mastery of Iridian tech wreaked havoc. Side by side they fought, human grit and Iridian sophistication forging an unstoppable combination. Amidst the chaos of battle, Nathan saw a plasma grenade arc towards Ren's exposed back. Without hesitation, he lunged, tackling her to the ground as the explosive detonated behind them. Searing heat washed over Nathan's armor, but the shields held. Ren stared up at him, her eyes wide with shock and gratitude. In that moment, something shifted between them an unspoken understanding, a bond forged in blood and fire. But the battle was far from finished. The rebels pressed their attack, forcing Nathan and Wren back step by bloody step. The royal compound's defenses crumbled, breached by the relentless onslaught. With a sinking feeling, Nathan realized they had no choice but to fall back to the inner sanctum. As the rebels poured into the compound, Nathan and Wren led the grim retreat, buying time with every plasma bolt and phase-shifted shot. The battered defenders filed into the sanctum, sealing the massive blast doors behind them. Nathan leaned heavily against the wall, his armor scorched and dented. Wren slumped beside him, her once pristine robes torn and stained. Around them, the surviving Iridians tended to the wounded, their faces etched with despair. They were well and truly trapped now, cut off from reinforcements or escape. The rebels had them surrounded, and it was only a matter of time before they breached the Sanctum's defenses. But Nathan King was not a man to go down without a fight. His mind raced, desperate for any option, any chance to turn the tables. And then, like a lightning bolt, it hit him. A plan began to form, audacious and borderline suicidal. He turned to Wren, his eyes blazing with fierce tenacity. I have an idea he said slowly, but you're not going to like it. Nathan quickly outlined his plan, a daring infiltration mission to strike at the rebel command itself. With the element of surprise and a small team of elite Iridian soldiers, they could slip past the rebel lines and hit them where it hurt most. Wren listened intently, her brow furrowed. It was a desperate gamble, fraught with peril. But what choice did they have? The alternative was to wait meekly for the end. And that was not the Iridian way, nor the human way. With grim commitment, Wren nodded her assent. They gathered their most skilled and trusted warriors, arming them with the best gear they had left. Nathan drilled them mercilessly, honing their stealth and infiltration skills. When the time came, they made their move, slipping out through a hidden passage and into the war-torn night. Nathan led the way, his senses razor-sharp, his phase shifter primed and ready. Through the rebel-infested jungle they crept, evading patrols and sentry posts with hair's-breadth escapes. Nathan's years of black ops experience proved invaluable, 
guiding them past obstacles that would have spelled doom for a lesser team. After a nerve-shredding journey, they reached the Rebel headquarters, a heavily fortified bunker jam packed with troops and gun emplacements. But Nathan had a few tricks up his sleeve. With surgical precision, they neutralized the outer guards, stealing their armor and access codes. Disguised as rebels, they slipped inside, Nathan's quick thinking and silver tongue bluffing them past security checkpoints. In the heart of the enemy stronghold, they hit pay dirt, a trove of data files exposing the secret power behind the rebellion. Nathan downloaded everything, his eyes widening as he scanned the revelations. It's all here, he breathed. The entire rebellion, the coup, everything, it was all orchestrated by someone called the Overseer. They've been pulling the strings from the shadows. But their intrusion did not go unnoticed. Alarms blared as rebel troops swarmed towards their position. Nathan and his team fought like cornered wolves, carving a bloody path towards their extraction point. They almost made it. Almost. But the rebels were too many, their weapons too strong. Nathan watched in helpless rage as his Iridian comrades fell, buying his escape with their lives. Battered, bloody, but unbroken, Nathan and a grievously wounded Wren barely made it back to the Sanctum. The data they carried was invaluable, but the price had been steep. Too steep. As Iridian medics frantically worked to save Wren's life, Nathan pored over the stolen files, his heart heavy with the weight of the fallen. The overseer's treachery ran deep, a cancer at the heart of Iridian society. Rooting them out would be a monumental task. But first they had to survive. The rebels still held the upper hand and time was running out. The royal compound's defenses were crumbling, the defender's morale teetering on a knife's edge. Nathan knew what he had to do. Striding out before the battered Iridian troops, he raised his voice pouring every ounce of his conviction and charisma into his words. I know you're tired. I know you're scared. Hell, I'm scared too. But we can't give up now. Too much depends on us. Your families, your civilization, your very way of life. He gestured to the wounded Wren, his voice cracking with emotion. Your queen fought for you, bled for you. Now it's our turn. We have to hold the line at any expense. We have to show these rebel bastards what Iridians are made of. As Nathan's words washed over them, the Iridian soldiers straightened, their eyes kindling with renewed perseverance. Gone was the despair, replaced by the iron will to fight and win. This human, this Nathan King, is one of us now, Wren declared, her voice weak but unyielding. Follow him as you would follow me, for the Imperium. The Iridians roared their ascent, thrusting their weapons high. With Nathan and Wren at their head, they charged forth to meet the rebel attackers head-on. What followed was the stuff of legend, a battle that would be sang of for generations to come. Human grit and Iridian valor, fighting side by side, an unbreakable alliance in a seemingly impossible way. The rebels fought with the desperate strength of fanatics, but they were no match for the combined might of Nathan and Wren's forces. Inch by bloody inch, the Iridian loyalists pushed them back, reclaiming their shattered compound. In the end, the rebels broke and ran, their ranks shattered, their bid for power crushed. The royal compound, battered but unbroken, stood tall once more. But for Nathan and Wren, there was no time to rest on their laurels. The overseer was still out there, weaving their webs of deceit and treachery. Unmasking and defeating them would be their greatest challenge yet. As they stood amidst the smoking ruins of the battlefield, Nathan turned to Wren, his eyes alight with fierce purpose. Looks like our little alliance has some unfinished business, your highness, he quipped. Wren met his gaze, her own perseverance burning just as bright. Indeed we do, Nathan King. Indeed we do. They clasped hands, human and Iridian, bound by trust, respect, and the unbreakable bond of those who had faced death together. Come what may, they would face it side by side, an unlikely partnership that had become the last, best hope for an embattled civilization. The road ahead was dark and perilous, but together they would see it through to the end. 
The smoke from the battle still hung in the air as Nathan and Wren surveyed the aftermath. Bodies of rebels and loyalists alike littered the ground, a grim reminder of the cost of their victory. But there was no time to mourn. The retreating rebels were scattered and vulnerable. Now was the time to strike. We need to move fast, Nathan said, his voice hoarse from shouting orders. Hit them before they can regroup. Wren nodded, her eyes steely with purpose. Agreed. I'll mobilize our remaining forces. Within hours, they had assembled a strike team of their best soldiers. But tracking the rebels proved challenging. The enemy had dispersed into the dense jungle, using hit-and-run tactics to evade detection. Damn it, Nathan growled, studying a holographic map. They're slippery bastards. Wren placed a hand on his shoulder. We have an advantage they don't. She gestured to a group of Iridian technicians huddled around a bank of glowing screens. Our long-range sensors can pierce the jungle canopy. We'll find them. Sure enough, the advanced Iridian technology soon picked up heat signatures and energy readings from several hidden rebel encampments. Nathan and Wren quickly formulated a plan, splitting their forces to launch simultaneous raids. Nathan led a team deep into the heart of the jungle. The humid air clung to his skin as they crept through the underbrush, weapons at the ready. Suddenly, a flash of movement caught his eye. He signaled his squad to halt, peering through the foliage. What he saw made his blood run cold. There, in a clearing ahead, stood General Zekrin himself, surrounded by a cadre of heavily armed guards. Well, well, Nathan muttered. Looks like we hit the jackpot. Without warning, plasma fire erupted from the rebel position. Nathan's team scrambled for cover as energy bolts scorched the air around them. The jungle echoed with the sounds of battle as both sides unleashed hell. Nathan's mind raced, assessing the situation. The rebels had superior firepower and positioning, but he'd be damned if he'd let that stop him. He barked orders to his squad, coordinating their movements with hand signals and short bursts of calm chatter. Using the dense foliage for cover, Nathan's team slowly but surely gained ground. He ducked and weaved through the firefight, his phase shifter humming with energy as he closed in on Zekrin. The rebel general's cybernetic enhancements made him a formidable opponent, but Nathan's street-fighting instincts served him well. He ducked under a vicious swing from Zekron's energy blade, countering with a series of lightning-fast strikes that sent the cyborg reeling. Just as Nathan thought he had the upper hand, a familiar voice cried out in pain. He whirled to see Wren crumple to the ground, hit by a stray plasma bolt. His moment of distraction cost him dearly. Zekrin's fist slammed into Nathan's chest with bone-crushing force, sending him flying. He hit the ground hard, gasping for air. The rebel general loomed over him, energy blade poised for a killing blow. Time seemed to slow. Nathan's hand fumbled for the detonator in his pocket his last high-stakes endeavor. As Zekrin's blade descended, Nathan thumbed the switch. The world exploded in light and sound. Nathan threw himself over Wren's prone form as the charges he'd planted earlier tore through the rebel camp. Heat washed over them in suffocating waves. When the dust settled, Nathan found himself barely clinging to consciousness. Through blurred vision, he saw Wren stirring beneath him, battered but alive. Of Zekrin and his men, there was no sign, only scattered debris and smoldering craters. The last thing Nathan heard before darkness took him was the whine of approaching dropships. Help had arrived, but for him, it might be too late. Nathan drifted in and out of consciousness, catching snippets of frantic voices and the hum of medical equipment. He felt as if he were floating, disconnected from his own body. Massive internal injuries. Human physiology is remarkable. Only chance is to... When he finally clawed his way back to full awareness, Nathan found himself in a sterile medical bay. His body felt... different. Wrong, somehow. He tried to sit up, only to gasp in shock as he caught sight of his arm, now a gleaming construct of metal and synthetic muscle. Easy there, came Wren's voice from beside him. She looked haggard with dark circles under her eyes, but there was relief written plain on her face. You've been through quite an ordeal. What, what happened to me? Nathan asked, his voice barely above a whisper. 
Ren's expression turned solemn. You were gravely wounded in the explosion. It was the only way to save your life. We had to augment you with cybernetic enhancements. Nathan stared at his new limbs, a maelstrom of emotions churning inside him. Part of him recoiled at what he'd become, while another part marveled at the seamless blend of human and machine. Over the following days, Nathan struggled to come to terms with his new reality. Simple tasks like walking or grasping objects became monumental challenges as he adjusted to his enhanced body. But Ren was there every step of the way, guiding him with patience and understanding. Focus, she said softly, as Nathan strained to pick up a small cylinder. Don't fight the enhancements. Let them become a part of you. Slowly but surely, Nathan began to master his new capabilities. He found himself stronger, faster, more resilient than ever before. The perfect fusion of human adaptability and Iridian technology. As Nathan recovered, reports flowed in from across the sector. With Zekrin's death, the rebel forces were in disarray. Victory seemed within reach, but the shadow of the mysterious overseer still loomed large. Nathan and Wren pored over intelligence reports, searching for any clue to the overseer's true nature. They raided secure facilities, interrogated captured rebels, and pieced together fragments of data. A chilling picture began to emerge. The overseer was no mere rebel leader, but an artificial intelligence of staggering power and complexity. Created eons ago by a long-forgotten Iridian sect, it had been intended as the ultimate safeguard for their civilization. But something had gone terribly wrong. This is way above my pay grade, Nathan muttered, as he studied holographic schematics of the AI's supposed structure. We're talking about a machine intelligence that's been playing a millennia-long game of 4D chess. Ren's face was grim. And now it seeks to remake our entire society in its own twisted image. We cannot allow that to happen. With the immediate rebel threat neutralized, Nathan and Ren gathered their most trusted allies. In a secure war room deep beneath the royal palace, they began to plan their final, high-stakes endeavor against the Overseer. The fate of an entire civilization hung in the balance. But as Nathan looked around at the determined faces of his comrades, human and Iridian alike, he felt a spark of hope. Together, they just might have a chance to end this threat once and for all. The sky burned. Fragments of the Overseer's orbital nexus streaked through the atmosphere, leaving trails of fire in their wake. Ren stood motionless, her eyes fixed on the apocalyptic display above. Around her, the surviving Iridian forces huddled in small groups, their voices hushed and faces drawn. Ren's hands clenched at her sides. The victory felt hollow, tainted by the cost. Nathan was gone. The realization hit her anew a physical ache in her chest. She saw him in her mind's eye, his cocky grin, the fierce light in his eyes as he charged into battle. Now nothing remained but memories and falling debris. Your Highness, a voice interrupted her reverie. The council awaits your presence. Wren nodded, steeling herself for what lay ahead. The walk to the command center was a blur of salutes and sympathetic glances. As she entered, the buzz of conversation died away. The air crackled with tension. General Vax, a hardliner known for his xenophobic views, spoke first. We must strike now, while the rebels are in disarray. Crush them utterly, to ensure this madness never happens again. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the room. Wren felt a surge of anger. This was everything Nathan had fought against. The very mindset that had allowed the Overseer to gain a foothold in the first place. She stood her voice ringing out clear and strong. No, we will not give in to fear and hatred. That path leads only to more bloodshed, more division. Ren paced the room, meeting the eyes of each council member in turn. I stand before you today because of Nathan King, a human, an outsider. Without his courage, his creativity, his unwavering spirit, we would all be slaves to the overseer's cold logic. She paused, letting her words sink in. Nathan showed us a better way. He proved that our strength lies not in isolation, but in unity, in embracing the unique gifts each species brings to the table. 
The room fell silent. Ren could see the impact of her words on their faces. Some thoughtful, others uncomfortable, a few openly hostile. From this day forward, she continued, we will honor Nathan's sacrifice by building a new Iridian society, one that reaches out to other cultures instead of shunning them, one that values diversity as its greatest asset. In the days that followed, Ren threw herself into making this vision a reality. She stood before a vast crowd in the capital, unveiling plans for a towering monument to Nathan. The holographic render showed a larger-than-life figure, arms outstretched as if embracing the cosmos itself. Let this stand as a reminder, Ren proclaimed, her voice carrying across the throng, of the day a single human changed the course of our civilization. May we always strive to embody his spirit of courage, innovation, and unity. The announcement of the Terran Knights drew both excitement and controversy. Ren personally oversaw the recruitment efforts, seeking out the best and brightest from a dozen different species. In the training grounds, she watched with pride as Iridians sparred alongside humans, Zarlac, and others, each bringing their unique strengths to bear. As the new era of cooperation began to take shape, Ren allowed herself a moment of hope. Perhaps Nathan's dream of a truly united galaxy could become reality. Then came the message that shattered everything. Ren sat alone in her private chambers, watching the recorded plea from Dr. Zalthar, a respected xenoarchaeologist. The Iridian's normally composed features were twisted with fear. Your Highness, Zalthar's holographic form said, voice trembling. The ancient texts were right. The Devourer is real, and it's awakening. Our war with the Overseer, the energy released. It stirred something terrible from its slumber. Ren felt the blood drain from her face as Zalthar detailed his findings. Fragments of cosmic history, pieced together from a dozen dead worlds. A force of pure destruction that saw all life as an affront to the natural order of the universe. We don't have much time, Zalthar concluded. Months, perhaps a year at most, before it reaches our galaxy. And when it does... The implications hit Ren like a physical blow. Everything they had fought for, everything Nathan had died for, could be wiped away in an instant. She rose, her mind already racing with plans. They needed allies, resources, any advantage they could scrape together. But more than that, they needed hope the spark of defiance that Nathan had kindled in the darkest days of the rebellion. Ren activated her comm unit. Assemble the Council and the Terran Knights. We have work to do. As she strode from her chambers, Ren allowed herself one last glance at the stars, visible through her viewport. Somewhere out there, an unimaginable horror was stirring. But they would face it as Nathan had taught them, together with courage and ingenuity. The true test of everything they had learned was about to begin. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.